Hi, this is Ashuti from Unity Women's College, Manjeri. I am going to give a brief outline of the poem titled To Live in the Borderlands Means You by Gloria and Zeldua. Before we explore, a couple of prerequisites are essential. First of all, keep the poem handy. Leave the thought that there is something cryptic in the poem. However, we are ready to meet the intimidating unknown vocabulary if you don't know Spanish. Now read the poem twice to get a general idea. Finally, please read it once again as a universal poem kept in a context. Now it's perfect to proceed. Let's go to the title. The title is To Live in Borderlands Means You. Firstly, there is no invisible border between the title and the poem. The questions that the title address may be about the political context where you fail to see where you fit in. The context of identity conflicts where the individual suffers from lack of belongingness. The inescapability and the invisible confinement in an open space. The condition that you have no option given that to live. To live in the borderlands is a refrain. It echoes throughout the poem. Now, in the beginning, you, like me, may be curious about the following. Where is this borderland? How does it look like? Let me tell you, it does not comprise of a continuous structure. Instead, a series of abstractions classified as fences or walls form the border. The borderland mentioned by the writer is Texas, U.S., Southwest, Mexico border where President Donald Trump proceeded recently with the construction of a 150 miles solid barrier. In an article titled A Moving Border and the History of a Difficult Boundary, Ron Duncan made a significant remark about the U.S.-Mexico border. For centuries, America's borders were kept for grabs. European nations staked claims on papers while tribes claimed the ground itself. But the border remained a work in progress, an imaginary line, until troops clashed and treaties settled the question. In 1849, after the Mexican-American War, the United States sent teams of surveyors, soldiers and laborers to mark this new line in the desert, which sounded simple but proved difficult. The team struggled as the Southwest seethed with conflict. A line had been drawn, but the border was far from settled. Now, let's discuss uh, the question in the poem what it means to be in the borderland. The culture of the person occupying the borderland will be a hybrid culture where you cannot find any trace of unadulterated uniqueness. Life in the borderland problematizes the nationalistic notion of unity. The borderland here celebrates plurality, rejects divisions and mocks at the notion of seclusion and security. The speaker's identity is beyond identities. She described herself as neither Hispana, India, Negra, Espanola, Nigapacha, Eras, Mestiza, Mulata. This identity is revealed through lacks. Here, the writer in an unambiguous way reveal the dilemma of the men and women in borderland. In addition to the painful stance, divided loyalties is indicated through the word half-breed. It's not simply existential crisis. Is it simply some sort of spiritual dilemma? It seems not. The word crossfire suggests how conflicts fuel anarchy due to this in-betweenness. 
Again, when placing the word live and camps together, the speaker articulates the Christ of life lived near military camps. Peace is an always threatened feeling on the borderland. What is certain there is only uncertainty. The poem tells about the politics of being. Since the individual living on the borderland does not have a solid identity, the biggest challenge of the person is to decide on what political position is to be taken. It's not simply about his or her choice. It is a matter of acceptability too. There is always guilt working inside. To live in the borderlands means knowing that the India in you betrayed for 500 years is no longer speaking to you. This is a very important line from the poem. Let me read it again. To live in the borderland means knowing that the India inside you, the India in you betrayed for 500 years is no longer speaking to you. There is an air of guilt and consciousness. Among the diversities, one can identify a converging point. The point is nothing less than awareness of the Indian, red Indian in the individual. However, that awareness is inadequate to provide solace because that point of being Indian is no longer existent. That was lost as the individuals betrayed the identity in favor of ambition. India is personified here to highlight the betrayal. The duration is so long, 500 years, that makes a reconciliation practically impossible. The scope of moving back to the roots is no more. That option has been ended. So, one cannot rescue in the past, which has already been obliterated. Another fundamental query is about how do you see yourself and how do they see you? There is a line from the poem. The Mexicaners call you Rajeta. The Mexicaners call you Rajetas. The denying the Anglo inside you, the denying the Anglo inside you is as bad as having denied the Indian or black, is as bad as having denied the Indian or black. Brajeta is a Spanish word included in the poem. The Mexicans conceive the people in the borderland as wearing multicolored clothes. So they are not even Anglo to them. Their peculiar existence can be summarized like this. They neither resemble their ancestors nor resemble the fellow Americans. They appeared as hybrid to the stranger. There may be the issue of untranslatability. What is untranslatable may be the feeling. So this untreat translatability may have layers. Cuando wise in La Frontera is incorporated with the text without translation. Cuando wise in La Frontera is a Spanish expression literally standing for when you live on the border. What idea did you draw from this inclusion? Well, I go three. Firstly, these Spanish Words may alienate the foreign reader or they may make the reader understand about the strange feeling. In addition to the knowledge about the writer's command over Spanish and English, the reader will know about his inability to demarcate between languages too. This is my second inference. Thirdly, Again, it suggests about the writer's attitude to the notion of purity and amalgamation. The speaker in the poem continues. People walk through you. The wind steals your voice. You are Bara, Uwe, scapegoat 
forerunner of a new race, half and half both, woman and man, neither a new gender. The lines denote the despair of the speaker who, with the help of the metaphors donkey and ox, attempts to state the treatment received in the country. Here too, the Spanish word burra and ue encroached to the English territory. The writers spoke about this plight as occupying a new gendered space where you fit into both or you never fit in either. A series of analogies were showcased to exemplify the unparalleled occupation in the borderlands. They include adding chili into bosch, which would kill its natural flavor of sweet or so, eat whole wheat tortillas, that is, eat like a Mexican when you remain in U.S. Speak Tex-Mex with a Brooklyn accent as you neither belong to Texas nor to Mexico or you belong to both. Be stopped by La Migra, immigration people at the border checkpoints. You will be intoxicated by the fortunes of food by Mexican gold production industry. However, to put it straight, the speaker in the form says that this life is very dangerous. The words gun barrel and rope crushing the throat suggest the risk involved. The writer continues indicating the ambiguities involved in the life. In the borderlands, you are the battleground, where the enemies are kin to each other. In the borderlands, you are the battleground where enemies are kin to each other. You are at home, a stranger, the border disputes have been settled. You are at home, a stranger, the border disputes have been settled. The volley of shots have been have scattered the truce. You are wounded, lost in action, dead fighting back. The volley of shots have been scat have scattered the truce. You are wounded, lost in action, dead fighting back. Kins and enemies at home while a stranger, volley of shots and truce, and dead fighting back depict the complexities and ambiguities of life in borderland. The writer concludes that when you live in the borderland, you live like a dead bread, with all your living qualities have been crushed out of your being. It's a compromise. Substituting life with survival will make your articulation of life more valid. To survive too, you live sin fronteras, that is, without borders or boundaries. You will have to always remember to be crossroads. That will ease survival. Though Gloria and Zeldua, the writer, adopted a confessional mode of telling, the poetic content is replete with political matter. So, here the speaker's subjectivity is highly political. The personal here turns political and portrays the crisis of recognizing and illustrating one's identity. Ambition and trauma color the texture of the poem written in a simple language. The only hazard of understanding is the inclusion of Spanish-Mexican vocabulary into it. But later, the reader may recognize the necessity of such an incorporation as it helps to reveal the intricacies of borderline existence. Probably, Ansel Dua's coinage, Nepantlera, theorizing the threshold life of the people who refuse to align themselves with a single exclusive category, supports the reader to understand the poem better. Reading her semi-autobiographical work, Borderlands, La Frontera, The New Mestiza, published in 1987, will enlighten the reader more on the issue discussed in the poem. Thank you very much.